He's got the toys. He's got showmanship. And he's got sex appeal. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, from the great Southwest, here's the guru of gadgets, the dapper and dashing Don Bain, the Gadget Professor. Gadget Professor. Here for the most part for uh, sinistic relationships. They want to find companies that can take their technology and bring it to the next level or companies that need their technology or they need their technology. So it's the exchange of uh, information and uh, connectivity and that's what makes CES so great because people from all over the world are here so it's not necessarily that they're going to sell their stuff to some distributor. It's that we have this great technology. We think it can do this, this, and this. Do you, can you use this? Can you see a, an opening where you can take our technology and enhance it? So, uh, today we are here. It's uh, Carl Heinz. Yes. <laughs> and I am Don Bain, the gadget professor. Good morning, hey, sir. Hey, good morning. Yeah, I got a bit of a cold. I hope I don't want to that's cough okay. I, too that's much. That's okay. <laughs> Uh, and you were from Vandenberg Labs. Now, your yeah. last name is similar, so uh, you must be the CEO and the founder. That's correct. Excellent. So tell me about uh, what it is that you do. In fact, most people would know my name from earlier times because they called me somewhat inaccurately the father of MP3. The father of MP3? Yep. Wow. Ah, that's, so. that's something. Now I know you. <laughs> okay. And I've been at CES quite some times. I used to work for Fraunhofer, first okay. in Erlangen, we yes. where we did the MP3 work, then in Ilmenau. And now I reached the age limit of my Fraunhofer contract. So I thought there's some inf unfinished business. There are some things people have been dreaming of and never made work, so let's try. I love meeting people like this, you know, the inventors of a product. They, they have so much energy and passion. They never stop. What are we working on now? You know, they all dream to have sound in a headphone, which sounds not in your head, like I now hear you, right. but somebody really out there, or some sound source out there with direction and distance realistically. We call it plausible reproduction. Plausible. And, yeah, and that's something uh, a lot of companies have tried over the years. There's been more than 50 years of research but the progress has been slow, 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 slow. You can use head tracking to get about the right direction. But that's about it. You always have the sound near your head. So the question is how to do this better. And we found in the basic research something people had been thinking of, but it's ne never been in the textbooks, that the acoustics of the room you are in is a very important factor. Okay. So now we have a proof of concept uh, up in the Venetian on the 29th floor where people first listen to some music from loudspeakers, then they get the headphone on and they don't even realize that the headphones are switched on because they still think the loudspeakers oh, are it's playing. it's coming out of the loudspeaker. It sounds like it's coming out of the loudspeakers, but it's in reality the headphones. They take off the head headphone and they are, oh, I couldn't believe that. That's pretty fascinating. So how is that process achieved? Um, that uses some of the known stuff with having a generic head-related transfer function, as it is called. Uh, then uh, we do uh, some measurement of the room. That's one okay. setup process early okay. on. We did that on Saturday morning. So it's similar to the stereos that you used to buy in the old days, like the Denons, and you push the button and it would spray sound around the wall and get it back and supposedly direct the sound to where it was needed? With loudspeakers, people have done similar things for a long time. Okay. But for headphones, it never worked. Never worked. And now you, you have a system that and it does now work. we have a system which does work, and everybody visiting us here has told us, no, they haven't heard anything like that. Yeah, I haven't. Uh, so in other words, if uh, you go to the symphony and you're sitting in the symphony, I mean, it never sounds like it's... Fortunately, the headsets will never do it justice because of the acoustics in the in the room yeah. and uh, just the, the, exactly. the ambience yeah. of the of the sound. Yeah. Uh, With loudspeaker, you can do great things these days. We've been working on that long time ago when I was still with Fraunhofer. 
but now with headphones that's the first time you get the same realistic sound theater like you get uh, from loudspeakers. Very interesting. Now, do you have a prototype? Uh, that we call it proof of concept, but uh, mixing studios who want to mix uh, for multi-channel content like Dolby Atmos and others don't want to do so. <laughs> right. Uh, they really would like to have that because they can then check their mixes or even do them in rooms which are not fully equipped with the many loudspeakers. So we have some systems already out there. In fact, one is in Belgium, the next one will be set up in Switzerland a few weeks from now. Uh, at NYU, New York University, yes. there are several places they want this from us. We did the test already there. So is the end goal to come up with a uh, consumer product like a headset? Yes, definitely. Okay. That still needs some work. We need headphone manufacturers to work with. We are open for corporations. Uh, I do want to establish a brand myself with this. With your but Brandenburg name on it? Yes. <laughs> the Brandenburg headsets. Yep. People have told me so often with MP3, why did Apple make much more money from it than you did? Still, we got a lot of licensing income, more than a billion euros in total right. for Fraunhofer. And some of that went to myself. Good. But that's why I can fund this company now. I see. But, uh, of course, who does the full uh, thing from IP to implementation to selling the products gets a much bigger share of the Absolutely. income. Absolutely. It's called capitalism. Yes. <laughs> now, where are you based out of? In Germany, in Ilmenau. That's halfway in between Berlin and Munich. It's a little town. Okay. So it's nice to live there. Okay. And we got a very diverse team, women and men, from all over the world. Half of them from Germany, half of them from all over the world. Some 17 people in the moment, and it's really fun to work with oh, these I'm young sure. people. Now, refresh my memory. When was the MP3 invented? Oh, there were a number of inventions. So the first patent, which was used later on, is from 86. The standard was ready in 92, but it took then quite some years until it really took off. And now we have uh, FLAC. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, FLAC, of course, is uh, wherever you are in the studio or so on, you should do lossless coding. Right. Uh, whenever you have the right devices, AAC is better than MP3, and I'm allowed to say that because I was involved in both. <laughs> well, you're getting it from the expert. You don't get any better than that, so that's, uh, that's, that's pretty cool. Now, what's the timetable, do you feel, for development <coughs> of a, a headset that, that we can actually buy and use? Uh, it now depends on financing. Because we can go on like we are in the moment, right. but we want to really scale up It shouldn't everything. be that hard for a guy of your stature to come up with financing. Uh, yes, that's what I've been told often, but it's not that easy. So you're here at CES to basically have some synergy with some other companies yes. that will see the technology that you're developing and, and help you fund that and, and bring yeah. it to... Uh, to the consumer. Yeah, and in fact, it's really important to demo it because I wouldn't have believed it either. No, <laughs> I'm sure. It. Now, can I see that demo? Yeah, Where 29th, 331. 29th floor here? Yep. Okay. Here at the Venetian, 29th floor, 331, Brandenburg Labs, and you can listen to it. Well, that's pretty interesting. I'd love to see that. So uh, may, I'd love to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for being here. If people wanted to find out more information, where would they go? Uh, there is brandenburg-labs.com is our website. Okay, great. The and best of like luck to you, and I'm going to uh, follow uh, the progress of this uh, new upcoming headset. I'll be one of your first customers. Great, thanks. Okay. <laughs> Very nice to meet you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, there you have it. Uh, the inventor of the MP3, uh, uh, Karl Heinz Brandenburg. Uh, I'm honored to meet him. That's such a cool thing. Uh, Wow. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, I love meeting people like that because, uh, like I said, they're on fire. They just, they just don't stop. Uh, they invent one thing, and then they go on to another. Then they go on to another. And uh, uh, they're brilliant people, and that's what, uh, that's what makes the, uh, 
the world go round. So uh, that's a company to uh, keep your eye on uh, for, sh for sure. Uh, wow, the inventor of the MP3. Pretty cool, pretty cool. <laughs> The Gadget Professor is produced by Don Bain. Multimedia Communications, LLC. If you would like your product reviewed on The Gadget Professor or would like to appear on The Gadget Professor, contact us via email at thegadgetprofessor at gmail.com. The opinions expressed on the program by the host, guests, call-in listeners, or chatters are solely the opinions of the original source who expressed them. And thank you for watching The Gadget Professor. Gadget Professor.